Michael Levy, thank you very much for having me. Good to we are meet here you. at Lightwave Logic. We are in Colorado seeing the place where magic happens, where the organic polymers are made. And it is so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I arrive and the first thing I see is that. So if we walk over, this is a, a wall of patterns. And as you know, Lightwave Logic generates electro-optic chromophores which are used as polymers in a polymer slot modulator. And what we have here is some of our patents. So we're at Lightwave Logic's headquarter plant in Englewood, Colorado. That's in the, uh, the tech center just south of Denver in Colorado. And where we are today, we're in the chemistry manufacturing facility that we have here. As you can see, I have a huge hood behind me and this is where we perform the chemistry uh, that we make our electro-optic polymer materials. And these are the materials that we're using in the high-speed polymer modulators. And in fact, you can see there's some of the things going on behind me, but I have some samples. I mean, this is electro-optic polymer. And then if you come in close, you can see it's a little jar of powder. And you can see this particular one is actually colored olive green. And if you look behind me, I've got uh, different types of uh, chromophores that we actually produce here. This is the pachinamines. This color here is actually like a, uh, a rusty color red. And we have another one here, which I really like actually. This is, uh, this is a purple colored one. And so we don't really design the polymers because of the color, but we design them because of the performance they generate. And so they allow optical data to be sent very, very quickly. And if you put these polymers into modulator devices, slot modulators, we call them polymer slot modulators, then the power consumption is very, very low. It needs less than one volt to drive signals, 200 gigabits per second. And this is the level that the data centers are looking for in transceivers, optical transceivers today, as we look to increase speeds that uh, are used in the optical network. So this is the organic polymer everyone is talking about. Why now? Why do we need this now? We need this now because the polymers, are, they have a very large optical bandwidth and they work at very low voltage, which is low power consumption. And if you look at the, uh, the demand that's been created by generative artificial intelligence, which is actually asking the data centers to increase the data rates to lower the power consumption, you put these modulators, these, these polymers into slot modulators, they perform at 200 gigabits per second or less than the volts. They also perform at 400 gigabits per second less than the volt. Now, the, the polymer slot modulators are actually created in silicon on 200 millimeter wafers. Now this is silicon photonics. So what the polymers are doing, they're extending the performance of the silicon photonic pick circuits, photonic integrated circuits. And so now we can extend the performance of silicon using a polymer material. This is really, really exciting. And so if you can do that, not only can you achieve what the data centers are looking for today, which is 200 gigabits per second per lane and less than a volt, we've already demonstrated with our partners, Polariton and ETH Zurich, you could do this at 400 gigabits per second. But the natural bandwidth of the polymer can actually make the speeds go even faster than that. So it's really, really exciting. This means the reason why it's important today is it's because it's got performance headroom over semiconductor technologies, and that's what makes it really exciting. As we said, you do the testing and characterization of all your enabled modules. What do we have here? So we're, we're looking at a high-speed test. Now, for us, high-speed is 110 gigahertz. So for a lot of people, that's very high frequency. But the test setup is designed to work at those frequencies because the performance of electro-optic chromophores, our polymers that go into the polymer slot modulators, which are fabricated on 200 millimeter silicon wafers, get tested in this type of piece of test equipment. Now we can see there's lots of different test equipment around 
but you can see the design of this is 410 gigahertz frequency, which is uh, very high. It's in the microwave range. In fact, this is typical what you would see from MMICs in the electronics world, but we're actually doing this in the optical world. How difficult it is to bring microwave technology to photonic testing? It's tricky. And if you talk to any person who's involved in MIMICs, different types of semiconductor MMICs over the years, um, those types of frequencies, any type of uh, metal or anything is an antenna. So you have to be very careful about your testing. So how can we accelerate this being in actual products? How can we convince wafer fabs? How can we convince um, data centers and their tier ones to use this in their products? So we're doing all the things from a commercial standpoint you would like to see. So yes, we have manufacturing here at Lightwave in our chemistry facility to generate the polymers, and we can scale that up in volume. So we have a facility here on Plum where we can scale these polymers up in volume, even you know these ones here too. But when it comes to putting the polymers onto a silicon wafer, the slot moduli, then we work with foundries. And the one foundry we talked about this year was AMF based in Singapore. We're working with this foundry to scale the wafers and the polymer modulators. So from that standpoint, our partners are helping us do that. Um, in order to address other commercial opportunities, we have to partner with companies that make transceivers, companies that do the packaging of the modulators. And we're doing that right now. We haven't given guidance to who those partners are, but we're working with large transceiver companies to make sure the polymers go into silicon slot modulators. And those silicon slot modulators are the engine for optical transceivers that get used into the data centers. And polymers are not are not new. Polymers have existed in the photonics industry for many years. And polymers are already in many products, as you're mentioning, for example, OLED TVs. Uh, what are the main challenges that you have to overcome today to have them in high-speed interconnects? So if we think about this from a 20,000 foot perspective, we're very comfortable when it comes to semiconductors. And the modulators, the optical modulators that are on the internet, the optical network today, are semiconductor based. So that's an incumbent competition. So when you bring in a new technology platform to commercialization, and this is chromophore, organic, polymer based, then we have to look at what other technology that is polymer based has been very successful. Well, looking at your TV screen or your monitor right now, you know that organic LEDs or OLEDs have actually been very successful commercially. And so when organic technologies were brought to the forefront about 15 years ago, everybody wondered, everybody asked about the reliability, the robustness, the stability of polymers in a display. Well, those companies worked through those issues by providing reliability, lifetime, and knowledge of failure mechanisms and how to mitigate those failure mechanisms. We're doing exactly the same today. The next five years. What do you want to happen? When I look at the future, I usually summarize or praise this down to one word. I'd like to see electro-optic polymers be ubiquitous. I'd like to see everybody use them. That's why if you want to license the electro-optic polymer, we're happy to talk to you. If you want to buy polymer slot modulator, we're happy to talk to you. I want to see people use polymers everywhere, whether it's in optical transceivers for data centers or even you know, high-speed optical switching for optical, for quantum computing, even at cryogenic temperatures, which uh, folks are working on today.